Okay, so we've been in the mansion for a couple of days, and tonight I get to cook Nigerian foods. As you can see, I'm super excited about that. Guys, we'll come back Another to Sister's Talk TV. This is going to be all about world. basketball wives, so please so stay that tuned. Can have I just have some things I just wanted to, to clear up, and also some analysis of interviews we need to really talk about here. So before we get started, please make sure that you subscribe to our channel. Also, check us out on Instagram at Sister's Talk TV. Be sure to also, also like this video sure and check out our other videos as well. We review Basketball Wives, Real Housewives of Atlanta, Marriage Medicine. So please check out all of our other videos. So let's go ahead and get back on to Basketball Wives. So the season finale is actually going to be coming on tonight. And I don't know how I really feel because I really feel that they did a really poor job um, editing and also delivering us a story, a proper storyline, because OG has done, OG has done a really, really good job, pretty much exposing the audio, the unedited audio of what the house was like, the conversation she's had with all of the ladies except for Shawnee and Evelyn, the conversation she's had with the two um, sisters. Nia and Noria, the conversation she's had with um, Kristen, Malaysia, Jackie, and, um, and Jennifer. And I just have to say that that what was portrayed in the in the actual episodes is not what's being portrayed in the audio. In the audio, it just seems like the ladies were all civil with one, one um, another. The conversation was more respectful respectable the conversation between Kristen and OG and Malaysia with the colorism situation was a lot more informative and what they portrayed on the episode was definitely a false narrative and it's just not right and I'm just happy that like I said I've mentioned this multiple times I'm just happy that OG actually exposed the unedited audio and told her own story so big big shout out to OG for really doing that because if she's if she never had exposed this audio we would have been going by what production showed us so it's just like a one-sided story and also a single story so OG kudos to you for telling your own truth and not allowing a network or producers to tell your story for you. Okay, so I also want to talk about the interview that the sisters did with um, DJ Richie Sky and also the interview that RLM3 did with OG's PR Elton. So I tried to give everyone the benefit of the doubt and try to really listen to the audio, listen to both of the interviews, um, just to kind of see like, well, what, what, what really happened between OG and the sisters? So we all know there's three sides of the story. One side, it's the first side, the second side, and then the truth. So in, I can definitely, so, okay. So let's talk about the interview with the sisters um, with DJ Richie Sky. Okay, so what I thought so far outside of like the, I felt like the interview was, it was a little, it was informative, you know, he tried to ask the questions that he needed to ask, but I, I really do feel like the sisters were not really staying on topic with the questions because I felt so there was obviously the two sisters and their PRV. So they talked about the situation with how did OG initiate or how was the initiation of Nia brought on or how was she how did she get on the show? And it went from how did she get on the show to, well, how 
what she, you know, introduced to the show to pretty much bashing OG, everything that OG did and all this kind of stuff. So I really couldn't really understand like the actual story on what really happened. I'm not really sure because it was just all over the place. So I couldn't really get a concise kind of um, in-depth look at how how Mia got on the basketball line. Because it was just all over the place. They talked about Shawnee. They talked about it was, it just was, it didn't flow well. So we didn't really get a very direct answer. I felt like it would have been really good if it was just Mia so we can really understand Mia's side and Mia's point of view on what really happened because we're here in Noria's. Um, she's talking about, you know, how Shawnee is, how Shawnee's really nice, how Shawnee's really cool, and she can understand why some of the other girls, like, you know, why she was in the favor of OG. Um, and then we have V, and it was just, it was just not as organized um, with um, a lot of the, three of the ladies um, interviewing um, with him. I felt like we should have really understood, like, Mia's side and got Mia's point of view because I feel that it's, although we are, you know, we've known OG, we've been introduced to OG for a really long time, I do feel like Mia should also have her moment where she can actually tell her side of the, her side um, as opposed to the other two ladies being a part of the interview. That's just my take on it. Overall, I really wish we would have heard more, got a complete story from Mia. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to RLM3. So he did an interview with OG's actual PR. So it was just him by himself. He did not, OG was not there. No one else was there. And I felt like we got more of a direct answer for, from OG's PR because of course it's just him one-on-one. -on -one. So um, we're not really hearing other people's point of view, other people's take. And he was, his, um, so the, OG's PR was very articulate, just like OG. And it really made me sway to the side of um, RL um, of OG's PR Elton, just because he gave a very concise answer. Um, he wasn't really going in circles, so it it the story made more sense when he kind of talked about the situation. And also, if you listen to the audio, you look at the receipts. Um, it just made more sense and it the timeline flowed better um, when he pretty much talked about it so I definitely would suggest looking um, listening to DJ Richie Sky's interview with the ladies and also RL RLM3 and let me know what you guys think as far as the situation with Mia and OG let me know what you guys think of that. I would really like for him to re-interview Mia alone so we can just get a more direct answer because we are, because with the other two ladies there, it was, like I said, it just wasn't as direct. We didn't really get Mia's true perspective. So I do, I really wish he would um, re-interview Mia. So, OG also released another audio, and like, she just released it, I'm also going to post it here, and it's just pretty much like everything, um, how she was, how she pretty much told the ladies, um, the two sisters, how um, she d really doesn't want them to take a side, she wants the two sisters, she encouraged the two sisters to really learn the other ladies, and you know, she doesn't, she doesn't want them to be, you know, guilty by association, but I would just definitely suggest you guys listen to that, go, go to OG's Instagram, I will also post it here as well, so be out on the lookout for that, but let me know what you guys think so far about, you know, the interview with um, DJ Richie Sky and also RLM3 with the P OG's PR and then the Dorsey sisters. Um, like I said, I do really want to hear Nia's actual perspective. I do, from the interview, I really kind of felt like Nia and OG might have been, like they, they okay, I think that they kind of have similar personalities because they're just like 
two people that they just kind of I don't know like if you really listen to their like her interview with DJ Richie Scott and just Mia talking I really feel like me and OG could have been good friends just because the way that she you know um like her perspective on certain things she you know how she was saying like she's not a person that really goes um goes with you know the collectives or um she just doesn't seem like a person that really she it just seems like a person that kind of does her own thing is not easily swayed by um other people's opinion that's what it seemed like to me but let me know what you guys think um and i do feel like if if the situation kind of was organic where they met orga- like organically I do feel like they would have gotten along and she also mentioned that they were actually she was going to stick up for OG and I don't really to, to be quite honest I don't think OG <laughs> really needs anyone to stick up for her um, because I mean she was a one woman show this whole season she was all pretty much a one woman show last season because she, but although she did have CC, but she, um, she, she has the girls, she has the collectives in check. So I don't really think that OG really needs anyone to have her back. I feel like OG has had her own back since she started on this show on Basketball Wives. But, um, yeah, let me know what you guys think so far about the interview. And also, let me know what you guys, your thoughts on the season finale of Basketball Wives. What are you hoping to see? Do you want the series to come back? Do you feel like they need a revamp? And also, have you listened to both of the interviews? And does it change your perspective on, you know, the story? Because I do feel like, you know, the both of the stories, you know, they're, I don't know. It's just like the stories with um the Dorsey sisters and also the stories with OG the text messages it's like there's a little bit of truth you know with the Dorsey sisters there's a little bit of truth with OG you know text messages but like I said with Elton how he explained everything the timeline his seemed to flow a little bit better um with the timeline the um the messages that were that was presented but like i said um but yeah let me know your thoughts and stuff so thank you guys so much please be sure to like and subscribe to this channel also check us out on instagram at tishish talk tv peace love and blessings